In this video, I'd like to offer a simple introduction to our ShopFox variable speed wood lathe. Now, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a piece of wood to turn on the lathe. I'm going to show you which chisels to start with and how to progress through them to get to finer and finer details. And I'm going to show you how to chuck the wood into the lathe safely so that you get the best results. Um, before we even get started talking about the lathe and how it works, we have to get our, our wood prepared. So I am actually using this big chunk of wood right here, this big ugly cutoff from a project that I did. This is a six by six cedar post and uh, I've been using it for a plant stand, but it's not very interesting. So I think that uh, I'm going to turn it on the lathe and see what gives. Now the first thing I'm going to have to do is make sure that the two ends of the board or I guess, that's, do I, could you call this a board? <laughs> uh, the chunk of wood, uh, they both need to be parallel um, so that when I set them flat on the ground when I'm all done, it's not crooked. And I think that, that this end isn't exactly square. This was probably the, the rough cut end. So I'm gonna start by squaring this up. Now, how do you square up something that is this big around? I'm gonna use the bandsaw and the cross cut guide and see if I can get this to be a little more square on this end. Um, and then I also have some work to do to shave off the corners of this chunk of wood so that I don't spend all day trying to turn it from a square block to something round. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I've taken the rip fence off of bandsaw because I don't need it. I've put the cross cut guide on here and uh, I have raised up the um, blade guard and blade guide so that I can get my wood underneath and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to turn on the vacuum, I'm going to open the gate for this tool and I'm going to go ahead and cut the end off of this giant chunk of wood. Now I'm going to go really slow because this is a big piece of wood and I don't want to break the band. Wow, that's satisfying. And it's cedar, so it smells really good. I'm gonna do the other side now too. Okay, so using the bandsaw, I trued up the end of the board a little bit so that it was more square and flat on either end and not a rough cut. Uh, it wasn't exactly perfect after the bandsaw, so I also used the bench-mounted belt sander um, to flatten it out a little bit more. But that was super boring, so I didn't take a video of it. But we're not ready to put this in the lathe yet. Uh, obviously, when you turn something on the lathe, it's going to make it round. And this is a big square. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my center point at either end. I'm going to need that in order to get it in the lathe straight. If you put it in crooked, then it's going to wobble a lot when it spins and that is super dangerous. So I need to find the exact center point at both ends and mark that. But I also am going to draw a big circle because these corners, while they don't seem like a big, you can put a square piece of wood in the, in the lathe and just turn it on and it'll start to spin and then you can slowly use the roughing gouge to round out those corners, but it takes forever. So I have built this nifty jig for the bandsaw that will allow the board to sit on the table at the 45 and you can cut off those corners so that you don't spend your entire life with the roughing gouge at the lathe. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. 
So obviously the easiest way to find the center point on this block is to start by just drawing an X. my compass to draw a circle and then you'll see how much wood there is really to remove from this block. So that's a lot of wood in those four corners. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. The reason I'm making, marking the center point on both sides before I do anything else is because we need this to be even in the lathe. It doesn't do to just have one side marked, that would be pointless. We need to know the center point of both sides before we do anything else. And I'm going to go ahead and mark my circle on the other side as well. Now this isn't the best of compass. And um, so this might be slightly uneven here or there. Everything's going to come out in the wash when I put it in the, way, in the lathe and start turning this. But this is just to kind of get a rough start. So what you see here is a jig. This is a piece of 2 by 4 that I ran over the table saw. I put the blade at a 45 and I made this notch. There's a big notch on one side and a smaller notch on the other side. And what this is made to do is hold your block of wood at the 45 so that you can pass it over the bandsaw. So using this in conjunction with the fence will allow me to take that corner off of this square block of wood and get it a little closer to being round. So I ran into a little problem that I should have anticipated. The chunk of wood that I'm trying to turn is too big to do what I want to do on the bandsaw. Now, I have done this before. Here's an example of a block of wood that I took the corners off of. I didn't do such a good job. It's pretty asymmetrical, but again, I have the center points marked, and once I put this, once I chuck this in the lathe and it starts to spin, I can round this all out and it'll become a pretty uniform cylinder pretty quickly. A lot more quickly than if I'd left the corners on. However, my larger chunk of wood here will not fit through the saw. It's going to bump the bearing that guides the blade and I can't get the fence on. And I would never want to freehand something like this on the bandsaw. It would be very dangerous and I would most likely break the blade. Now I don't want to do this kind of thing on the table saw either. That's very dangerous to have a, a piece of wood on the 45 like that. Again, any twist, any sort of movement that, that doesn't quite stay parallel with the blade and it's going to throw that piece of wood back at me. And that wood is so big that it could kill me if it threw that at me. So I have an idea. I'm going to use our power planer. We have a door planer that's a power handheld planer and it will take that corner off. It's going to take some doing, but I'll show you what I mean. All right, problem solving. So since my chunk of wood didn't fit in the bandsaw, I'm Going for plan B. I got out one of those days today. <laughs> I got out the power door planer. This just takes a little strip of wood off of whatever you pass it over each time. Kind of like a belt sander, but not really. Um, there's a roller in here with a blade and it just takes the top layer off of the wood over and over again. Now, since I have so much wood to remove, I'm gonna put it on the highest setting, which is 3 32ths of an inch. So one and a half sixteenths, <laughs> whatever. Um, and my piece of wood was even too big to put in any of the vices to, to work on it. So I have it just sitting here in this work vise, like a cradle, but I've clamped this little block of wood so that it's not gonna go anywhere. This tool isn't very aggressive like a saw, so I'm just passing over the surface, and so all I need it to do is stay put as I go over the top of it and not fall out of the vise. You'll see what I mean in a moment. 
Um, I do another video about the planers, um, including the, the, the big bench planer and the handheld planer. So if you haven't watched that and you're curious about this tool, you can, you can find out more about the planers in the, in the planer video. This is going to create so many wood chips, it's gonna, it's gonna smell like a hamster cage in here because <laughs> there's a cedar. All right, here we go. So you can see I've made some progress there and uh, now I just have to do the other three sides. That actually went really well and uh, yeah, I'm liking that. I'm not I'm noticing that I have a better circle on this end than on this end. This end's a little square, but that's not so much material that I can't take that off with the roughing gouge. But if you look at the table here, all of that would have had to come off on the lathe. And I'd say that the power planer did a little bit quicker job of it. So even though this system on the bandsaw was a little too small for the big piece of cedar that I'm using for my demonstration, I think that I should show you how this works anyhow. So I picked a smaller piece of stock. This is a four by four. I've marked my circle on either end. And then I've also marked lines down the edges where I know that I want the bandsaw blade to follow. And that's just gonna help me stay true to my, to my sled here. So I have this jig, it's kind of like a sled um, it has this groove cut in it and basically what I'm going to do is turn the saw on and I'm going to feed this board through and let it sit in that 45 degree groove and that'll help keep my board on the angle so that I can take those corners off. This is instead of using the, um, the hand planer and something small like this, the hand planer wouldn't work as well anyway because you'd have a hard time uh, putting it in the vise or kind of capturing it at anything. What I've done here is I've used the feather board from the table saw uh, and I've clamped that in the groove of the bandsaw just to keep my jig in place and then I have the fence here as well just to keep everything solid and I'm going to run that board along this jig. I'm going to turn on the vacuum and uh, I have my safety glasses on and I'm ready to go. Now, this last edge that I have to cut off of here, since I have a flat spot here already, I don't need my jig anymore. So as soon as that blade stops moving, I can take the feather board off and I can remove the jig and all I'll need to do is use the fence. Still moving. Even moving this slowly, it would cut off your finger. This is a good lesson in patience. There we go. All right.